murder count for the year increasing by two in just one day. Deputy leader of the opposition speaking out about crime and a stabbing at a local high school. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tyler Simonet with your JCN News for this Wednesday, March 23rd. Topping news tonight, two murders here in the capital in less than 24 hours leaves criminal investigators on the hunt for at least six gunmen believed to be responsible for these latest killings. Our Austin Fernander was on the scene of the latest homicide that unfolded on Stew Fish Drive off Carmichael Road, and here he is with the details. Less than 24 hours after a man was shot to the head on Wright's Lane off Wolf Road, the country recording yet another homicide here in New Providence. This time, police were called to the Carmichael Road area where they found a similar situation. The body of a male lying alongside a vehicle in front of his residence on Stewfish Drive. He too was shot to the head. Superintendent of Police Audley Peters on the scene of this morning's shooting says the incident unfolded sometime after 8 a.m. Our officers responded and they came to an apartment complex where in the parking lot they found the male lying next to a vehicle with wounds to his head that were consistent with gunshot. The MS technicians were called in, they assessed him and pronounced him lifeless. Our preliminary facts in this instance is that the victim was leaving his residence to go to his vehicle when four males armed with firearms approached him and shot him, fatally wounding him. We are very uh, we have very promising leads in this instance, and but however, we ask any persons who may have information that would lead us or assist us with these investigations to come forward, uh, call the Criminal Investigations Department at, or the Area Commander, Mr. Eugene Strawn, step in at the Camichael's World Station, have a conversation with him, and they can relay, he, he can relay that information to the Criminal Investigations Department. According to Superintendent Peters, the victim is in his late 20s and was believed to be a resident of the area. It is also alleged that this morning's victim was the driver of a vehicle seen fleeing the scene of a shooting incident in a widely circulated video on social media. Nearly two weeks ago, the country saw a bloody weekend with five homicides over the course of three days. Acting Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander during a Zoom press conference with the media last Tuesday suggested that the killings were gang-related and the results of a turf war. Asked if this killing might be connected to the recent spate of murders, Superintendent Peters says this. At the moment, in respect to this incident with what have transpired previously, we can't say that they are correlated. However, when we do our victimology and all of the assessing of the facts, we can come to a conclusion whether they are related or not. But in this instance, we cannot say make that a conclusion decision. Residents of Stufish Drive expressing much concern over this morning's incident. Some too frightened to even go on record, and others who did speak to our news team wanted to remain anonymous. They say that the area is a relatively quiet one. When I came back home, my, my kids told me so they heard um, gunfire and they were in fear for their life, they were scared. But as I was passing, because I live right through the next corner, when I was passing going home, I saw a bunch of police cars and stuff, you know, and I was trying to figure out what happened, because I know people who live through this corner. So we need to learn to sh show, show love, man, and, and instead of hatred. Listen to me, I haven't heard gunshot around you in almost, what, 9, 10, 11 years, especially um, people getting killed so close to where you live. This is a, this is a family oriented area. You understand, you have kids ride here constantly every evening after school, riding their bicycles and what have you. You understand, I just thank God it didn't happen around the um, hours of school being out, you know, because an innocent child or somebody bystander could have got to get hurt, you understand? I mean, like, what is this world coming to when you can't forgive? You understand, I said, before you, before you forgive, you gotta take an innocent life. Meanwhile, this resident calling on pastors to play a greater role in the communities. This is a family-oriented corner. An innocent child, this could have been after three where children would have been in the road, riding their bicycles, having a good time, you know, and one of them could have got hurt, you understand? We as black people, we got to really stop taking out one another, man. You understand? We, we, we got to stop the killing. You understand? We got to seek God. This is a Christian nation. You understand, pastors? You all need to stop sitting on your altar. And you're on your high horse and get out there and walk through the corner and speak to the young men. Them, a lot of them are hurting. 
a lot of them don't have a father figure a lot of them you know grow up and only a mother a mother can't raise a man you understand so we as men in this society we got we got to step out you understand and society need to stop judging based on your past you understand a lot of young men come out for murder you understand come out on bail they can't get a job because society stereotype them so how else they can feed their family they can go out there and they can commit crime you understand what I'm saying? in order for the crime to stop the government gotta look out for the people with a number of CCTV cameras in the area, Superintendent Peters says the information they have garnered so far is very promising. For JCN News, I'm Austin Fernander. Now, prior to the killing on Stewfish Drive, the country's 31st homicide took place on Wright's Lane off of Wolf Road sometime after 6 last evening. First responding officers met a man lying in the street with a gunshot wound to the head. Police say initial investigations revealed that the victim, whom police believed to be in his early 30s, was standing in the street when a small vehicle pulled up. Two males armed with firearms exited, discharged their weapons at the victim, and emergency medical services pronounced the victim dead on scene. Now, police initially told reporters that the suspects made good their escape prior to the officer's arrival. However, Superintendent Peters provided the media with this update on Stewfish Drive. We can say to the public that we have a male, an adult male in custody, who is assisting with our investigations. And the facts in that instance look very promising. And in due course, it's a possibility that we can wrap that matter up. I will. With 32 homicides now on record for 2022, Superintendent Ollie Peters says investigators have promising leads. He also sends this message to the public. It yeah. is very serious, but I can say with my colleagues, it is also very promising. People are heeding to the clarion call to assist. You heard that I mentioned earlier that uh, we have someone in custody. That is because of the partnership of members of the public. The criminals out there could rest assured the public is no longer taking foolishness and they're doing their part. We have capable guardian. The police department is a capable guardian. We're asking other members of the community to be the capable guardian. We have persons who are wanting to be willing offenders, looking for suitable targets. Well, the members of the public are now capable guardians and they are assisting the police with our investigations into these matters. We have two sides of this, prevention and detection. Well, we couldn't prevent, we certainly will detect and put the perpetrators before the court just so that justice would be carried out. Police are appealing to members of the public, anyone with information that can assist in finding the perpetrators or information to other criminal matters to contact the Criminal Investigation Department at 502-9991 or 2 or Crime Stoppers at 32-TIPS. Well, St. Barnabas Member of Parliament and Free National Movement Deputy Leader Shanadon Cartwright raising concerns over the recent spate of homicides. Mr. Cartwright noting his concern as at least two murders occurred in his constituency in recent weeks. Prior to speaking in the lower chambers, the MP in a statement notes that crime, particularly on New Providence, is not an issue to be passed off from one political party to another. It can only be solved with the buy-in of all stakeholders, inclusive of religious, civic, political and community leaders. Madam Speaker, we are being tested at this moment. We are being tested as a deliberative body. We are being tested as leaders. And let me just say this, uh, Madam Speaker, and I've been consistent with this, that I do not believe that crime should be used as a political football. I do not believe that that should be the case. It's very important to state that. But we, I believe, and many Bahamians believe, we are in a nation we are a nation in crisis right now. Mr. Cartwright further noting that Bahamians too are very concerned, asking where is the plan to address these issues? We're talking about the, no, no, we're talking about the, the murders. We're talking about the murders in the last, what, in the what, 10 murders, nine murders in the last two weeks. And if we sit here and it doesn't capture our conscience in a way to deal with this issue, to deal with this issue every day, Every day, communities are in fear. The question the Bahamian people are asking, what is the plan for the, from the government as it relates to this? What is the plan? And again, that's not a political statement. 
But at the end of the day, the government of the day, whoever it may be, has a responsibility to act and engage in a certain way. The FNM deputy leader says both government and opposition are duty-bound to heed the call and forge our collective efforts with other stakeholders to enlist honest and frank strategic national security discussions about the various societal issues cultivating gun violence and other forms of crime. A busy day for police officers as officers here in the capital confirmed that a male student from AF Adderley was stabbed this morning. We learned this much from police press liaison officer Superintendent Audley Peters. Now National Security Minister Wayne Monroe spoke to this incident during the morning session at the House of Assembly offering a few more details. And yes there was a stabbing at the AF Adderley school involving two young men who police intelligence say may be involved in a gang other than a good gang. The Minister of Education and the State Minister are still downstairs addressing it. Um, but certainly the Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner and I stand ready to put police into the schools and obviate the debate that we used to have about whether police should be in the school. I trust that that is urgent enough for Marco City and St. Barnabas. Two male students were taken into custody and are assisting police with their investigation. There has been no word on the victim's condition up to news time. This stabbing incident follows two homicides taking place here in the capital less than 24 hours apart. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.